This is the plaintiff, Brianna Martinez. She says she blew the transmission on her 2012 Nissan Altima and took it to her father, who's the defendant for repair. She assumed her father would fix the car right because she's his daughter, but he did a horrible job. When she asked him for her money back, he told his own daughter to take him to court. So that's exactly what she's doing, suing him for the $800 she's owed. This is the defendant, Amori Martinez. He says the plaintiff is his 20-year-old daughter who got an attitude with him regarding the repair of the transmission. She messed up. The defendant says daughter or no daughter. He spent 800 bucks fixing her car. He says the plaintiff cursed him out in front of his customers. She's as ungrateful as they come, and he's not giving her anything. He's accused of double-crossing a daughter. All parties, please use your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Martinez, you are suing your father, Mr. Martinez, for the return of $800 that you paid him to fix a transmission that, according to you, has not been fixed in over how long? Two years. Oh, okay. Talk to me and tell me what happened. So my car broke down in May or June of 2020. The same day that it broke down, it was sent to his job so that he could fix the, re the damages that were done to it. Do you live in the uh, same house as your father? No. Did you have a good relationship with him? He was around till I was two years old. And then he, uh, he cheated on my mom. So they broke up and now she raised me and my sister. Okay, but can I ask you, did, did you have a relationship with him? You gave him your car to fix, so I imagine you had a relationship. Yeah, with we him. did. Okay. It's like it was on and off. Some years we'll go like we we would go a year or two without talking to each other, and then we'll talk to each other again. Who initiates it when you talk to each other again? I mean, I guess I usually do because he's not the one to call. Okay. Or look for me, so. Okay. How old are you? Twenty. All right. So does he have his own business? Yes. And is it a car repair place? Yes. All right. So you give him the car. Uh, and what happens? I gave him the car the same day that it broke down. He took the vehicle and told me that it was going to take about a month to get fixed. I usually, this was not the first time that I've taken my car to him. There's been another time where I've taken it to him for like simple things. He takes his time with it. So I knew in this case, when my car broke down, I knew I wasn't getting it anytime soon. So when my car broke down, after a month, after he told me it was going to take a month to get fixed, I let a month go by and I had to purchase another car because I got fired from my job because of how long it took for me to get a vehicle. And I couldn't Uber because it was more expensive to Uber than what I was getting paid. So I had to purchase another car, another vehicle. So I guess when I purchased the, the other vehicle, like it gave him the okay to take longer with it because I have gone to his job and I have you know, made a scene because it was like every month I would call him and ask him for the vehicle and he'll keep saying, oh, next month, next month, next month. Do you, did you, when did you give him $800? I gave him the $800 after a year of him having the car. So I gave him the, the $800 on March 5th of 2021 and the car broke down 2020. Okay. So, and why did you give him the $800? Because he said he needed the $800 to purchase the transmission. Okay. So he said you needed a new, but it took, did it take him a year to tell you he, you needed a new transmission? No, he knew what the problem was, was from the beginning, but I didn't have the money to fix it at the time. Okay. And I, and neither did he. So the car was just parked for over a year. Okay. Just getting messed up. The so car. when you finally have the money and you give him the $800, what does he do? He doesn't do anything because the car was still parked there. I still had to continue asking him for the vehicle after I gave him the money. I still had to keep going to his job to check on the vehicle, to see the vehicle in the same exact spot. And that it did was you in. see any progress? No. Did he do anything? Not that I know of. I mean, did he tell you so he'd done something? He told me that he took out the transmission and that he tried to, to rebuild it, something like that. Took out the transmission and tried to rebuild it. 
Yes, but he told me with the money that I was giving him that that's what he was going to use to purchase the transmission. So did you point so that when, out to him? Yes. So and what did he say? That's the thing with him. is like he always comes up with another excuse. I'm not a mechanic, so when I would go to him about the car situation, he'll tell me different things, different words that I clearly don't understand, like different pieces that the car needed. Like every month it was another thing that the car needed, different things that the car needed. So he finally took it to somebody else. He took it to somebody else to get it fixed, which I don't even know who the person is. I don't even know who he gave the car to. Did you ever? I was just trusting him with. Did he ever tell you who he sent the car to? No, he did. He wouldn't give me their phone number. He wouldn't give me none of their information where the car was at I, for for a year. So for the first year, it was parked in his job, just sitting there doing nothing. It was just getting scratched up. What kind of car is this? It was a Nissan Altima 2012. Okay. So then after after I gave him the money, it still sat there, and then he gave it gave the vehicle to somebody else to get fixed. Once again, I, I was asking him for the person's information, the phone number. And what would he address. say? He wouldn't give it to me. What, he why would he not give it to you? What reason did he give for not giving it to you? He was saying that, oh, that he didn't want me to go to their job complaining about the vehicle the same way that I'm doing to him. Okay. So that was, you know, under. So when do you but, see your vehicle again? So I saw my vehicle after two years of 2021 on Thanksgiving. Instead of phone calls on holidays or my birthday, I, which I don't get from him, um, I, and instead of a phone call of saying happy Thanksgiving, I called him. I had to call him probably about 10 times to have my car delivered to my house which he had to tow it over here because it wouldn't even drive or turn on. So okay. he towed it to my house after two years, and the car wouldn't turn on, and it doesn't even go reverse. It Did he tell you reverse. why? He said that he gave it to them, and they didn't finish it. So basically, if I want it, because I kept asking for it, and he, he basically told me that if I wanted it, that I have to take it as it is. What happened, Mr. Martinez? Okay, so what happened was... I had to pay a $425 tow truck to bring the car to my shop. Do you had uh, to pay $425? Yes. Can you show me proof of that? I don't have it because I, I paid them to uh, Zell. Well, then you should have it because Zell has records. Well, she's, she knows that I paid the money because uh, the tow truck spoke to her when... Uh, when they was charging me that money to bring the car all the way to New Jersey. Okay, so what happens? So once I get the car over here, I notice that the transmission went bad. This is not the first time I worked on her vehicle. She likes to mess cars up, okay? So I said, you know what? I am tired of fixing your car. I said, now you're going to have to learn your lesson. You're going to pay for the transmission to get fixed yourself. I'm not going to charge you to install it. I'm not going to charge you to take, you know, to take it out, but you're going to have to pay for the transmission to get repaired. I don't rebuild transmission, so I have to take it to somebody else. I don't even do transmission work, you know. Uh, I just did it because I know how to do it, and it was because my, it's my daughter. So I, I decided, you know what, before I take it somewhere else where they're going to charge me two or $3,000, let me just take the transmission out myself, send it to a shop to get fixed. So in parts, was $800 for her transmission to get rebuilt, which I even had to go over there by his shop and help him because he was actually doing me a favor. Do you have so any proof that uh, you paid somebody $800? Uh, because she oh, said she was there when I she was there when I paid it. The thing or I try to look for I try to tell him to look for the, the receipt. And uh, he says all he could do is make me out another one. But I said, no, I wanted the receipt from that day, you know, so. And he couldn't give it to you. Why not? Because he says he doesn't have the receipt. He doesn't remember the date. He do you remember the date? No, I really don't. Were you there when he gives the other person $800, Ms. Martinez? No. Why do you think all. she was there? I don't uh, even know she, who when she gave, gave it to. As soon as she gave me the money, me and her, me and her was going to drive over there. She says, don't worry about it. Uh, just give it. You give it to him yourself. I oh, don't know so that she guy. wasn't there then when you gave him the money? No, no. She, would, she came to bring me the money here. Yeah. So I helped the guy with the transmission myself. He used to stay there late at night. He had... He had a couple of transmissions that we was taking parts off because that transmission, for some reason, for that Nissan, you they're not supposed to they're not supposed to be taken apart. 
According to the dealership, they're not. Those are transmissions that's not supposed to be taken. So then, apart. why were you guys taking it apart? Because we couldn't find the transmission nowhere. And on top of that, we if to get a used transmission, it was eighteen hundred dollars. So but why does the dealership part- say that you're not supposed to take this transmission apart? I well, really don't. They, well, I guess we kind of know because you guys weren't able to fix the transmission, though, right? We got the transmission working. The thing is, is that there's a filter on the transmission that is missing. So. I said, Brianna, it doesn't make no sense of putting the oil in this car and putting the oil pan on without the filter, okay? She came over here raising her one time and embarrassing me in front of customers. So just to get her out of here, well, actually before that, I had took, because when we did it, the transmission, I said, you know what? Let me just take it to the transmission guy that helped me rebuild it. So... I brought it to him to see what he can do. If he could find a filter, you know, that can match up with him having the car there because the transmission was already back inside the vehicle. So with him having the car there, it would be a lot easier for him to match something, okay? We couldn't get it. She wanted to go over there by him to raise hell at him, so I never gave her the address or the location where the car was at because the same thing she did here to me at my business, she was going to do to him. And what, what was it That's she be- did at your business? How did she embarrass you? Well, she was threatening me that she was going to break all my car windows, customers' car windows. Uh, not only did she did that, she well, not only did she say that, um, she said that when she see my car outside, she was going to scratch it. For some reason, I got a scratch on my car from, from fender to, rear, to, to the quarter panel. I don't know how that got there. I can't say it was her, but my BMW has a scratch from the fender all the way to the, to the quarter panel. Don't know how it got there. The car was completely not one scratch on it. So... I took it as, you know, maybe she did it because she was pissed off because sometimes she gets into a moment where if Brianna doesn't get her way, then it's hell with everybody, okay? The reason why her car took here so long is because I was waiting for her to make that money to fix her own car. Okay, so that's the reason for the first year, but then what's the reason for the second year? As soon as 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 we put, it's, it's that we can't get, to this day, we still can't get that filter for the transmission inside for some Right, reason. so then why, here's the thing though, then it, it, imagine that you weren't her father. She takes it to you to, to fix the transmission, you charge her 800 bucks to fix the transmission, then you don't fix the transmission. Why wouldn't she be right that she should get her money back? I realize um, supply chain, COVID, 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 you can't get parts, I know, I get it, because I'm mm-hmm. hit by this all the time. But I'm saying then, if this was a, a customer who was not your daughter, um, then what? After two, after two years or a year, let's say the first year's on her because she couldn't raise, she was raising the money to pay for, but, but the second year, why then wouldn't you have to give the customer the money back if you never got the car fixed? Well, I mean, uh, the, I told her to deduct out of the money that she gave me because basically I'm losing out on the money because if I give the money back to her, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get the money back for the transmission guy. I, I so know. I, I don't care her. though. I have to see. Like I have to. I have to look at this as though you weren't father and daughter. It, can you imagine if uh, if a customer said it's been a year and the transmission's not fixed? Oh, but I can't give you your money back because I'll be out. I would look at you and say, "Tough for you." That sounds like a you problem. Give your customer back the money. How is it different when it's your daughter? Well, it's different because uh, of my daughter. It's because my daughter is just that. She has another vehicle that I had to spend $1,350 that she smashed up. She said she hit a pothole. There was no way a pothole can cause all that damage. And she says, please, Dad, I need my car to get to work in school. So I took my money to put in her car. And now she doesn't realize the money that I spent on her new car that she has now. She wants to still charge me the eight hundred dollars. I want. I said, Brianna, you know, if you want the eight hundred, fine, fine. Just say, you know, just put, say that I gave it to you already, and I put it in towards, towards this new car that you have now. What do you mean, I put it in towards money. this new car? Yeah, because what she did was she crashed. She crashed the she car. She crashed the new car. The new car. Oh. She never paid a dollar for it. I had Can paid I everything out of my pocket. Now, did her mother help me with it? Neither her. She didn't help me with it. The thirteen hundred I spent on her car. Tell me, okay, two, now I do want you to respond to that, Miss Martinez. Okay, so regarding the incident when I hit a curb 
all of the things that he said he fixed, he did not fix a thing. After I received my car, after he fixed it, it was still messed up. I still Which car are we it. talking it, about? We are talking about the new car now, the new car that I had to purchase waiting for the Nissan to get fixed. Okay, well, who this fixed was, the car if he didn't fix the car? Who did you pay $1,300 um, to? It was a, a, a shop called 24-Hour Repair. Did LLC. you pay them? I, Yes, I sent you guys the receipt of evidence. How much did you pay them? Um, in total, it was about seven hundred something. That one is for for the new car because he says that I crashed it. I hit a curb and I ruined all of the right side of my. Did he the, pay anything for your new car? Did he fix anything know. on your new car? Did he have your new car? Did you give him your new car when you crashed he that one? He had it. He had it, but all he did was change my rims. So he put another car's rims on my vehicle, which he said were stolen. And those rims didn't even fit my vehicle. They, those rims were bigger and than the And according to you, Mr. Needed. Martinez, um, ha do you have any proof that you spent $1,300 on that car after you'd already returned her, um, her other car where she had given you $800? Yes, 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 I do. The thing is that I gave all my papers to my accountant for my taxes. You needed to get a copy um, of it for today. Now, I have a video on my cell phone that uh, it shows what she did, the damage that she did to this vehicle. So, okay, but I don't I want, I, what I want to know is what you did because you're telling me, well, why don't we consider us already paid up since I spent $1,300 on her uh, on a second car after I gave her back her first car? Uh, okay. I, I hear what you're saying, and I'd like to subscribe to your newsletter. But I, you're going to need to help yourself a little and prove to me you okay. spent thirteen hundred. I got a I got a video of uh, the. No video the will show me the damage, not the repair. I need I you to prove to, up the thirteen hundred dollars worth of repair. If you did thirteen hundred dollars worth of repair, you should have receipts for all the parts you bought. You should have stuff to show it. The thing is, the thing is, we're already on tax season, so I had to send all my tax paper, all my all my receipts to my tax to my accountant. All my receipts are on my accountant. The only receipts that I have near now is all two thousand twenty-two. She knows what I did. She heard me even on the phone with the auto parts store. She's just lying. I mean, she, uh, she knows she knows that I spend this money because she was on. A, I even put it on speaker just so she could hear the amount of money that I heard it was amount. costing me to fix her car. What? How? What? You heard the amount and how much was it? Yes, but he didn't pay it there. He just asked for the prices. OK. And I went out my way and figured that. He didn't do anything with the first car, so I already know it's going to be the same thing with the second car. Why would car, you bring so him the second car after the big problem with the first car? Because, it's like, I have money issues. So it's like with him, I feel as though he could, like, slowly work on it and I slowly pay him. But it's not like that either because even when I do pay him, the stuff doesn't even get done. I wouldn't take him a third car. Oh, I wouldn't. I, trust me. Never again. Can I just ask you one question because I'm dying to hear this? What is it like to sue your father? How does that make you feel? Honestly, it's em it's embarrassing. I I never thought I was ever gonna have to go through this. But honestly, he wanted this. This is what he wanted. So that did he, you ever I, ask I, him to give you back the eight hundred? Yes. And, and what I did have he phone say? Calls and videos of me asking him, and he'll tell me, "Oh, next week, next week." I even I even got tired of it, and I told my mom to ask him, and she would ask him, and he'll tell her the same thing. Oh, tell her next week, next week, next week. So then. Even got to the point where I did the court papers, and that usually takes up time. I had the court papers sitting for about a month, and I haven't filled them out yet because I was waiting for him to give me the money. And I called him, and I told him, look, I have the papers. Can you give me the money so that we don't have to take this process to court? He said, no. You know what? Take me to court. So and what's it like for you to be sued by your daughter, Mr. Martinez? Uh, honestly, I thought it was a joke. And uh, it's embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I thought it was a joke, and you know, I thought she was only playing. I, cause she'd say things and don't mean it. And then uh, so I said, if you want to sue me, sue me. If you want to take me to court, take me to court. It's embarrassing. I never thought uh, I'll be in court with my own daughter. I never been to court ever in my life when it has to do with my business. For were you I been in court for other reasons? Court. Never been in court. Yeah. Oh. Um. Ms. Martinez, what was that face?
because I know of people that have taken him to court for the same exact reason, car problems. Okay. He plays with people's Never. cars. All right, we're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. Um, look, I, it, I have to look at this without all of the emotional baggage that's attached to it. And if I pay you $800, you don't fix my transmission, you're the guy who's out 800 not me, if you weren't able to fix it even if you spent that 800. Now you tell me, but judge, after that, I paid 1300 to fix her car. Okay, that's called in the law a set off. And it's just like you said, well, just imagine that I paid you the 800 because I just paid 1300 for this. So that would be a set off. All I need you to do is prove what you're saying. But you have no stitch of evidence on everything, anything. You tell me I have no evidence. I can't find a receipt. I can't prove the $1,300. I mean, you know, I at don't... some point, you need to act like the adult that you are. I'm ordering you to return the $800 verdict for the plaintiff. Well, in this daughter versus father lawsuit, the daughter prevails. And uh, Mr. Martinez is going to have to give his daughter back $800. So let me ask you a quick question here, Mr. Martinez. What effect is this going to have on your relationship with your daughter, having brought you to court now? What happens after this? Well, it's not what happens after. Well, it's already, it's already, it's been like this for a while now, because uh, she's very disrespectful. So uh, I really don't care what she does anymore, you know? You don't seem to be too upset about it, you know? It's really a shame. Uh, this is your daughter. Yeah. All right, let's talk to the daughter now, Miss Martinez. Let me, uh, how, how do you feel, ma'am? I mean, I'm used to this. He's been like this my entire life. He's like this with me, like this with my sister. So we're, we're used to this. So this is nothing new. So in effect, no. um, I guess you were kind of finished with him. Would that be right? You're certainly not going to take another car to him. No, never. I found another mechanic, a great mechanic. So. All right. Well, I'm sorry it worked out this way. I feel sorry for you. I really do. And uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. You're going to get your money back. And uh, that'll kind of wrap it up. Harvey, what do you think about this situation? Doug, suing a relative is always tricky. I think it's a good idea before you end up in court to sit down with that person and see if you can repair the relationship. And if you have to go to court and you can't repair it and you can't agree, you guys should both agree that this should not end the relationship, but it is simply a third party, namely a judge, trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong, if that works. Do you have anything from your wedding that you're gonna pass down to your daughters? I still have my wedding dress. Lord knows if it's all, you know, eaten up by bugs. It was a but beautiful dress. It was a beautiful dress. It, it was, was who designed it? A friend of mine, Carlos, who yeah. has great taste. It's not even what he does, but he had always he's my oldest, dearest friend. We've right. been friends since we were thirteen. And he designed the dress and we had it made. And uh, it's in some hermetically sealed box that right. some cleaners charge me $175. A ransom, right. Who knows if it's all eaten up by bugs inside of the box. You can't open the box. Well, I'll tell you what, whoever puts it on better be pretty skinny because yeah, oh my you God. must have weighed about 105 pounds. pounds. I weighed 100 pounds. Oh my I just kept God. losing weight. She kept taking it in. I kept losing right. weight from stress. She kept taking it in. Right, right. And what about... Um, you have a tradition for Cuban weddings that uh, most people might not be familiar with. It's a piece of cloth that they drape on you. It's called a mantilla. A mantilla. It's a lace cloth at part of the cath during part of the Catholic wedding. Unfortunately, ours got stolen oh, during stolen. a theft. Who my steals the mantilla? Exactly. Good Lord. Was, uh, there was a theft in my mother's house, and oh, that mantilla is gone. Somebody but, was really down on. But the I rock still there. even have. Well, they stole a bunch of things. Right. But um, I still have even the lace from my wedding dress, and yeah. I've. I don't know if you know this, no. but each of my children, when they have left home and they have gone to a dorm or an apartment or wherever they were right. going, I have taken a piece of the lace wedding dress. I am crafty now that we think about <laughs> it. A, a piece of the lace wedding dress and framed it in a white on white frame with a white background. So you see, uh -huh. you see the rosebuds of the lace and that's, and it's framed and each of my girls have one of those. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, no boys, so I got nothing to pass on. Yeah. <laughs>